Dr. Ned Allen, talk us through cyber physical systems from a risk perspective. Well, the cyber physical system is a mechanical or physical system like an automobile or an airplane that is controlled by a computer, maybe with the help of a human operator or maybe completely autonomously. And the, the risk is that the computer will fail. We have all seen uh, our, our home computers come up with a blue screen and a little message that says, I'm terribly sorry, there's a fatal error. You may have lost some data. Uh, please reboot. And uh, uh, you don't want that to come up in front of the pilot of the airplane that you're traveling on. So the risk factor there is, is an external risk element? Uh, it's a combination of external and internal risk elements. That is, the software itself might be unstable or logically inconsistent. As you uh, recall, there was an incident at the Paris Air Show where an Airbus airplane did a low pass and wasn't able to pull up and crashed into the woods on the far side of the field. Um, that was an internal error in the software. And then um, external errors can occur from lightning strikes, natural events, or from uh, terrorist uh, uh, attacks or uh, cyber attacks on systems. And this is not just airplanes, but this is um, electrical grids, uh, natural gas pipeline uh, supply systems, all sorts of public systems are subject to internal and external errors. But with a cyber physical system, is, is there greater risk from solar flares? It, it's not, uh, it, it's uh, not at a greater risk from a terror threat. It's at, it's at a risk from whatever the threat is. And we are trying to eliminate, it's our uh, mandate as engineers to eliminate the potential uh, of, of uh, shutdown of the system in a way that's, that's uh, that would cause damage or loss of human life or damage to property. And it doesn't matter whether it, the source of the error comes from an intentional attack or an unintentional error in the software and, and so forth. So the effort that we put into uh, um, uh, uh, designing and proving these systems includes both the possibility of unexpected errors and the possibility of inadvertent uh, uh, internal errors. So just a software coder makes a mistake, for example, and or alternatively something more inimical like a, a terrorist attack or a cyber attack. Um, on these cyber physical systems, that's called uh, anti-tamper. Uh, um, activity where we try to make sure that if somebody messes with the system in some way it can still recover and it's not very vulnerable but it's impossible to eliminate all sources of potential error. The, the nature of this conference, this AGM, is, is about future risk and planning for future risk. Is it perhaps easier to plan for that risk in a highly technology or high technological background or a high technological sector than it is in the, the financial sector, for instance? Well, um, you need both. Uh, the financial people tend to lay off risk by putting it on someone else, by buying an insurance policy, which causes the investors in the insurance company to lose the money rather than the financing company to lose the money. So they lay off risk. Um, uh, the complex engineering companies like us try to eliminate the source of uh, risk and, and therefore uh, reduce the total loss to the society, whether it's laid off by one uh, um, party on to another or not. But you can let your imaginations run riot. Uh, well, uh, if, if I could, um, well, I, I believe that we can eliminate a great many risks and that, uh, uh, for example, the accident that occurred offshore in the United States at the Deepwater Horizon oil drilling rig actually had all the capabilities to avoid the accident on board but uh, it hadn't been well enough integrated and studied uh, so that, uh, for example, the New York Times reported that, um, that the person in charge that day, a woman engineer, um, could have uh, avoided the accident if she had merely uh, positioned uh, 31 switches into the right positions uh, 
while the accident was occurring. Keep in mind, you know, uh, waves are coming overboard. Uh, there's uh, fire everywhere, explosions, people screaming, jumping off the platform. And this woman is expected to be calm and more intelligent than the programmers who put the thing together in the first place. You know, she's supposed to figure out how to solve it. And that's absurd. You can't do that. We need to simulate these systems. And, and uh, Lockheed Martin does that on many, many of its projects, but it's very expensive to do that. So we have a major program, which is what I was reporting in this conference, on uh, trying to get the cost of, uh, of verifying and validating the quality of the system, make sure the quality is high and the system is trustworthy. We're, we're trying to get that down by an order of magnitude, at least a factor of 10, so that other people will use it, and it'll be used for offshore platforms, it'll be used for hospitals, it'll be used for electrical grids, communications uh, grids, and so forth, so that the entire technoculture that we're supporting as engineers will become more reliable and, and, uh, and, and able to meet the challenges coming up in the next century, which are gonna, where we're gonna create much more complex systems to help mitigate global warming, to replace our current energy economy and uh, improve our healthcare systems and so forth. And we just won't be able to do that without getting the cost of, of verification and validation of the system down. Right now it's about half the cost of developing a complex system. And, and the result is most people won't pay it. And so we have got to get that cost down so that everybody buys into this uh, reliability and high quality uh, concept.